Hey developers, today we're going to learn about three different project ideas that you can use when you're first starting to learn about web development and programming. So the advice out there is always to always start building at some point. There's only so many tutorials you can take. There's almost so much reading you can do, but eventually you got to start creating. And I've always had the problem of like why and how and what you should create and what, where do you get inspiration from and how do you have it make some meaning behind it. Because the obvious problem is that if you know you need to learn and start doing projects, it's not always fun to just start writing a calculator app or writing some website that you have no affiliation for and you're just doing it to learn. Uh, some people can do that, but I always think if you have a little bit more purpose behind it, it makes it easier and more fun to learn. So here's a couple of ideas. And by the way, my name is Eric Hanchett. I'm a software developer, JavaScript developer, and if you guys want to learn more about me in the description below, you can sign up for my mailing list. It has, I'll give you some tips and tricks for learning web development, JavaScript, and especially Vue.js right now, which I'm really into. So the first project and actually first website I wanted to share to you with you guys is a website called catchafire.org. So it's a way you can basically contribute to open uh, to nonprofits, some of which uh, are using open source, some of which are not. But it all gives you a, a lot of choices here. So let's say you're into web design or web development. You can click here. You can click find a project. And then it'll give you uh, some opportunities. So some are just building whole website constructions with visual design search engine marketing but they're really looking for volunteers and the most important thing is you don't have to be an expert i mean you can look at the details for each one of these that that are available but they're looking for people that are willing to commit and to help and that's the most important thing is that you're willing to commit and take the time and effort to actually help them the worst thing you want to do is sign up to help one of these people and then never follow through with it but I think this is a great way for new web developers uh, to kind of get involved and try to th actually add a little bit more meaning when they're learning. So you can look at this website, try to find maybe a project that you're interested, contact them, see if there's some way you can volunteer to help with the website. You can tell them you're still learning. A lot of them will work with you on it. A lot of them may already have a web developer that you might be able to mentor underneath. So it might be worth uh, checking out just to see if there's something that uh, that's interesting to you and also you get to help out a good cause uh, usually that's that's the way it works i've had or i've heard some good experiences from it so that's sketchafire.org the second website i wanted to mention is there's a bunch of these uh, there's um, this one's amazing react projects but you can find amazing view projects but there's a lot of projects that a lot of uh, web websites that list kind of really popular open source projects. And this can give you some inspiration on in what to do. So uh, they're contributing to open source in general. There is a lot of, it, it can be complicated for new programmers and developers just because there's a lot you have to learn. But one way of maybe trying to, to get into this is that you could try to find a website that is created or a, an, a project that is open source and then contribute to it. So this is kind of a neat website. Uh, this is kind of just a list actually. Like for example, Gatsby is really popular right now. You can click on it. It shows you how many stars there is. Um, you can kind of click around and, and see these different projects and, and then try to figure out, well, I'd like to contribute and help to it. Uh, a, a, little, a better resource, of course, is this one. It's called How to Contribute to Open Source. Free Code Camp is an amazing resource if you guys don't know about it. It has a whole curriculum of how you teaching you to code. They actually did have a nonprofit section at one point where you can contribute to, to nonprofits. Uh, they removed that for the most part, and they really recommend new developers to contribute to open source now. I think they even might even be part of the curriculum. For, uh, for it, but they created this website. So um, they recommend a bunch of tools. I'm gonna show you a couple and they even have links. So usually when you're uh, contributing to an open source project, there's these tags that uh, 
that they have on different issues. So you can actually say, see there's these tags for beginner, easy, first timers only. This actually lists everything in GitHub for that. So you can click on that and just kind of peruse through it to see if there's any sort of issues you want to work on. Another great website is upforgrabs.net. Um, here you can look at different popular tags for JavaScript and then it'll give you all the kind of beginner issues right listed. So I could say here blockstack.js, good first task, and click on it and it has it all listed here. And so usually when you contribute to the open source, and this could be a whole nother video, I won't get into too much of it, is you find it in GitHub usually and there's usually a contributor guidelines, it's usually in the documentation or maintainer, and you want to read it obviously to figure out how to do it but a lot of it is after you read it, you want to go into the issues and then these, there's these little tags here and these tags kind of tell you what they're looking for. So another great way to start with open source is to look for documentation tags. Um, so if you want to do documentation, you could do that. But there's also tags, as we saw here, for good first tasks. And then you can see here. And uh, usually what happens is after it, it'll tell you what they're looking for, someone will mention that they could probably help out with it. There's usually some discussion. Um, the worst thing is not reverse, but you want to try to actually try to complete it. But if you get stuck, you can leave another message on the issue. Usually you'll get some response back. Um, but this is a great way to, to find issues. And a lot of times I've noticed too, you'll have there's these really popular repositories, really popular open source projects that have hundreds of issues and many contributors, but there's so many tools and smaller projects that you might, that, uh, that aren't as popular, but are still looking for contributors. So you may want to think of, instead of going to some of these huge projects, you could also try some of these smaller ones. Uh, maybe there's a tool that you use every day in your, and it's an open source project. Um, or a plugin, something like that, you may want to look for that too. But I, I think that trying to learn to program and after you learn the basics and contributing to open source is a, a really great way to, to learn a lot more. A another website, so here's the Blockstack.js, is Code Triage. That's all listed, by the way, these are all listed in the free Code Camp uh, GitHub page. Uh, Code Triage is a really good site. You can sort by different filters, by different languages. And then once you find a project you're interested in, there's actually, you can sign up with it and you'll get emails in your inbox every day. And uh, then you can start contributing to it, which is really awesome. And the last kind of bit of feedback and tip I would say for everyone is to, uh, if, if you don't wanna commit to open source, you don't wanna commit to a nonprofit through catchfire.org, I think the least thing you could do is try to create your own website. So if you don't have your own domain name, buy your domain name from GoDaddy for $10 or, or anywhere else really. And then try to create a website, host it up on GitHub pages. Uh, it's really simple. Um, and then just start adding features to it. Maybe you want to just play around with making that calculator app. Maybe create a, create a homepage, make a project page, an about page, and just kind of start building together a nice website, put it together all yourself. It doesn't have to be amazingly beautiful at first. Uh, you just need to kind of work on, on adding things to it. And then you can, if, if you're getting even more ambitious, you can look at the back end instead of maybe hosting on GitHub pages, you can look at uh, complete hosting somewhere. DreamHost might be one place you can go. Uh, I don't really like GoDaddy, but you could try GoDaddy. If you if you want to try a platform as a service, you could try Heroku. There's just so many choices. I can make a whole video on, on where to, to host your stuff. Of course, there's also like a VPS, like a virtual private server. You can use uh, a, a bunch of websites for that too. So maybe start simple. Just create your homepage. I mean, create create your own website that lists everything about you. That would be your first website and kind of first way of building a real project and that would be helpful and then just start scaling it from there see if you can 
start talking to back end, see if you can add a, a dashboard for yourself, thought, you know, mess around with authentication and an authorization. So that's, that's my quick tips on how to get started with a few project ideas to get started with when you're first learning the program. If you guys have some more, leave a comment below with what you guys suggest. I'd love to see it. There's just so many ways of doing this. Uh, and also, if you like these videos, click that subscribe button and click that thumbs up. That really helps me. Thanks.